you play. And you're in Nebraska, right? That's correct. And uh, the old bread basket, how, how are things in the middle of the yeah. these days? Um, you know, pretty, where I live in Omaha is not, um, you know, it's one of the more liberal places in the state. Right. So it's like we've had a mask mandate all along and yeah. um, my wife's back at work, but they do temperature checks and wear masks and do all their stuff there. Um, right. I, you know, it doesn't seem like we have the sort of uh, unrest and stuff, you know, it's more like uh, uh, people are just a little mellower here or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> but they say every capital is about to be attacked. So who knows? Oh, man. I mean, that, I mean, that, that would laugh. be in Lincoln, you know, sure. where I grew up about 40 miles away. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, we all watched the stuff here, you know, when it was going down and on the Wednesday and it was just incredible. I'm sure you're just in awe. I'm sure it adds to how weird it is to be in another country that's not this way right now, you know. Exactly. <laughs> um, I love New Zealand. It's how long have you been there? Since 94. Wow. Yeah. So how do you like it? <laughs> Better every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the more my, you walk. my kids thank me every day for moving here because I, you know, I had to drag them kicking and screaming. They were little kids uh, uh, when we moved here from Rochester, New York, and uh, now it's like the best thing ever. Yeah, it's such a beautiful place. I love it there. I've been maybe two or three times, I think. Yeah, yep, yep. So you got a new album out, which we need to talk about, Cat's Paw. Okay, uh, let's do it. <laughs> and it sounds like, I mean, the guitar on it is awesome. And it's all you. And that's right. What, yeah. What I understand is kind of your first foray into like letting it letting it fly. So what brought that on? Well, um, I just kind of had been thinking last couple of years, maybe I'll do a record where I play lead guitar. I thought it would be fun for me. Right. And uh, also I thought, you know, it, maybe it would make the record a little different, you know, give it its own kind of thing. Uh, its own vibe and uh it's funny in some of the uh interviews i've talked about when i was a teenager i i started out as a bass player right and uh real young you know when i was in like sixth grade so i guess i was <laughs> you know 11 or something yep. and uh as i learned to play bass which i did mostly off listening to records kind of by ear. Yep. Um, I had this sort of thought in my head that even if I wasn't playing bass, that somehow I would still get better at playing bass, just sort of subconsciously. Right. I'd get more and more used to it, <laughs> you know, as weird as that <laughs> sounds. And uh, there was a, a moment uh, when I was, maybe 13 or something where I thought to myself, I wonder if that will apply to like everything so that when I'm like really old, <laughs> I'll just know how to play lead guitar. Right. Or I'll, I'll just be able to play the drums or something, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, so in a weird way, you know, I remembered that and this was about the time I kind of imagined maybe I could play lead guitar. So I didn't really know <laughs> what it would be like. I mean, I played everything on a lot of stuff when I was learning to write songs and I was, you know, a teenager. Right. I made little four track tapes and all I had was, you know, some kind of beatbox and, you know, early rudimentary drum machine kind of thing. And then I would do everything else. So um, I'd kind of done it. But ever since I would sort of have had a career in music, I really, I was supposed to do it a few times, like really record myself at home. Right. But I never really started doing that till after the turn of the century when the label industry was sort of collapsing. And then at the same time, we were, we finally had really good quality recording at home. Yeah. Sort of available, you know, to everybody. So uh, it was still like I hadn't done it in a in a long time, 
and uh, I just kind of didn't know what it would be like. And I uh, found out it was really fun to do. I didn't, I tried not to sort of belabor anything, um, just kind of go for it a few times and then pick whatever seemed kind of usable out of that. Yeah. So uh, really the way I would do with any uh, musician who was going to play on something of mine, unless they did it themselves at home before they sent me, you know, the track. So uh, it just kind of worked out and it was really fun to do. And I think it sort of gives the record its own thing. Um, people say, um, as well as me, that I'm probably most influenced by Richard Lloyd. Um, I, well, think... I was going to ask you, because you, you've obviously worked with some amazing guitar players over the years. Richard Lloyd, Ivan Julian, Robert Quine. Uh, so how much of yeah, that I, has seeped into what you're playing? I think a lot of it has. And really all those guys. I love Ivan. I loved Bob. And, uh, and I love Richard. Somehow Richard, for me, is the one I feel like I got the most of my sort of feel from kind right. of just the way he would attack stuff and the combination of that with my music you know felt really natural to me and um when i was kind of working on the record and listening back it, it most reminds me of him i mean i can't do technically a lot of what richard can do right. but that feeling the my reaching for kind of to be in the melody the way i hear it i think yeah. sort of brings a little of my own thing to it you know right and the other guitar player that came to mind as i was listening was neil young especially on oh yeah flights, so i don't know if that uh, yeah i love neil young he's the greatest Yeah, someone brought up Neil Young. Maybe, maybe it was my manager at some point. It could have been in a review. I'm not exactly sure, but obviously, I love Neil Young and you know completely idolize him as an artist. In my mind, he's like a real artist. You know, yeah, yeah. just kept doing his thing and will keep doing his thing as long as he can. You know, it seems that way. Yeah. Uh, now, the other musician who's on the album is a guy named Rick Menk, who plays the drums. That's so, right. So how did how did that collaboration happen? How were the tracks actually put together? Well, I mean, Rick and I go way back. He's played with me live um, almost all of my career. Um, he and uh, Paul Chastain, who plays bass with me, had a group called Velvet Crush that was on Epic. Right. around the time of kind of girlfriend altered beast 100 percent right. fun so it was kind of after those three records of mine that we really started always touring together um so and rick's played on everything you know including um the records i made with Susanna hoffs of the covers right. records you know he's just done a lot and we both lived in la and he would come over to my house and record and now we both live in the Midwest and he, he lives outside of Minneapolis. So he, he came down, you know, drove down to my house. I guess he, maybe he flew here and I picked him up as right. I think about it, but he could drive down here. And uh, we just, I just had, you know, kind of these ideas built up of what I wanted to try and accomplish while he was here. And we spent, you know, three or four days and just did a bunch of recording and, like it usually is, I think he didn't really know too much what it was going to be like, you know, once I put everything on it. Um, we really just tend to record with uh, me playing guitar and, you know, maybe singing some kind of guide for him uh, to know sections and things. Um, but it's still kind of mysterious to me and him at the time we're recording the drums right. and then as as i add things 
it becomes more apparent what it is. Right. I mean, the, the overall vibe of the record, though, is it rocks. And so what, what, was, from, what, what was happening with you that made you want to make a record that sounded like that? I don't know. I, I just sort of, I thought of it as being really rock and kind of all of one sort of thing. Like it all went together a little more, you know, normally, and I've really kind of, it's been on purpose that during my career, I will tend to try to get a really wide range of stuff. Right. You know, I loved that about the Beatles, you know, a lot of my favorite artists, they would have, you know, different kinds of songs. Yeah. And so I think I've always steered away from, you know, things becoming too much one kind of thing. But Cat's Paw, I really thought of it being that way. I didn't have a lot of extra songs. So I kind of recorded all the things I had, you know, gotcha. yeah, yeah. and it just was sort of a more limit. It had more limits on it from, you know, the way I ended up playing stuff myself to not having so many songs um, that kind of made it a certain way. Now, so I thought of that too. It's a really rock record. It's kind of more whole in some way. And then uh, as I went back and listened to it and when I was finishing it and mastering it, I kind of thought, well, it really does have different kinds of songs and different kinds of vibes on it. Yeah. It's not, it still really has that kind of meanness, I think. Um, but um, just the approach, I think, of Rick and I went that weekend, we recorded the drums, was just a little more thinking harder edge. Gotcha, and I gotcha. made the drums really loud on it. I mean, also yeah. because it was such a simple instrumentation, just very rarely did I add any extra kind of instruments. It was very bass guitar and drums and lent itself to that kind of uh, mixing it as you know real direct you know yeah, there's a song called drifting on it and that the drum sound is just like whoa <laughs> it comes in. <laughs> yeah follow me in tonight leaving you cold without the I'm sure. I mean, Rick, Rick was like, the drums are so loud. And I don't know, that was just a thing I liked about it when I was working on it. And I find most records I love, even when they're, you know, 60s records that are really differently recorded, like Beatles albums, the drums are still really loud, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's something I learned over the years in the studio. Like in the beginning, I kind of didn't want the drums to be really loud. And I think part of that is because in the 80s, the drums were so overblown <laughs> sounding. You know, it was really doing something different to go more to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a kit. But I think as I've made my own records at home over time, I've learned almost that they kind of almost can't be too loud. Gotcha. Like they just will sort of, you'll forget about how loud they are right? and it'll just make it sound more together. It, I'm sure John it's Bonham would volume. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the record was recorded pre-COVID and pre all this stuff that's going on now. Um, so obviously a different world than what it's being released in, but there's still, I mean, you can hear things like in a song, such as uh let's see you believe challenge me. the gods yeah and yeah. and uh the opening song blown away they like really fit sort of with, with the pandemic Just do what you want way I approached the record and and it was such a kind of solitary effort 
weirdly fits with the pandemic. I mean, we, I really worked on it mostly in the summer of 2019 right. and then kind of mixed it late in the year and, and mastered it very early 2020. And, you know, then everything happened. And, uh, you know, I wasn't ready to just start recording right again. You know, I just kind of finished this thing. And so I may be one of the few artists who didn't make their record during the right. pandemic. Instead, I really watched a lot of stuff, um, tons of movies and shows. And th I did a lot of consumption. Right, gotcha. Know, which, I, which I really like doing, you know, so... I don't really have a problem with that. You know, the other thing is I'm really kind of a loner sort of person anyway. Like I tend to not go out and, right. you know, have a lot of friends and go to parties and things. I mean, that's one reason why it was easy, kind of easy for us to leave LA because I kind of never, it didn't matter where I was, you know, gotcha. I used the internet to connect. Yep, and, yep, yep. you know, then if I was touring, it's just as easy to be out here in the middle of the country to start tours. All my flights are shorter, you know? Sure, yeah. And, and so... Not that anybody's uh, going anywhere these days, but there you go. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, my wife and I are buddies, so, uh, you know, we're kind of weirdly just two peas in a pod, and we, we enjoy just us hanging out. Nice. Um, so in some ways... Um, other, other than, you know, financially it's devastating because I mostly make money these days when I play shows Sure. and to not be able to play shows at all, it's yeah. just money stopped, you know? So it's been kind of scary and tight in that way, but, you know, we know eventually we'll go back to doing that somehow, yep. you know, somehow. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's bad enough right now that it's making me doubt a little bit, you know, that we'll really be playing in the summer or right. maybe even by the fall, but I think it's going to at least be fall of, yeah. of 2021. Yeah, I really like. don't, not only do I not want to risk uh, my audience, but I don't want to die. You know, I feel Fair like I, I'll, uh, I could easily, you know, be taken down by it. Yeah. So it's another reason I've, you know, been fine with, you know, yeah. hanging out and being home. So when you're hanging out and being home, have you done much creative work? Have you been songwriting or thinking about what you're going to do next? Not a lot. I mean, somewhat with getting together the artwork for Cat's Paw and hooking up with Omnivore, who uh, are putting out the record. Right. Um, that's kind of among the mo more creative things I've done. I've really gotcha. just been a black hole of information, <laughs> kind of just like there's just been enough going on that between being glued to the news and then watching all so much content um it's that kind of filled my life a little bit i do feel like now because i'd finished the record early in 2020 now i can start writing songs and thinking toward a next record right but, but you know the last month or two i've also started doing lots of interviews for cat's paw right. it isn't officially out until uh friday right the 15th so yeah. yeah when is that that's friday wow <laughs> yeah Two days so, from here. Uh, we're ahead, comes up, ahead of you. it comes up so quickly yeah i had a I have an internet view scheduled i'm doing them today and then the next couple days and uh one of them was like we'll talk about the uh 30th anniversary of girlfriend and it's like i had no idea like oh my god it's the yeah, right. 30th now <laughs> wow it's a great record go, we did go around on the, God, I think it was the 20th and we started playing some uh, shows where we played the whole album right. and that kind of lasted till probably the 25th anniversary or something. Yeah. So well, I think uh, it's the um, 35th anniversary of this one. There you go. Yeah. And it just, <laughs> it kind of, you know, time rolls along. Yeah. And when you see an old record like this and you, how are you, different as an artist than you were when you made this record back in 1986? Well, I think I, that record in particular, I was my first album, you know, for a label. 
Right. And um, I was still kind of trying to figure out who I was a little bit. It was recorded with lots of different producers. I went to England and uh, that was just, I was just kind of sent there by my A&R guy to kind of hang out in London, which was right. awesome. And um, he had me meet a couple people when I was there. And I met this guy, Alan Tarney, who was very successful at the moment with the big song for uh, Aha. Take, oh, right. on Take on Me. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't and there a Tarney he, Spencer group. Was he the Tarney and Tarney Spencer group? He might have been. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know. Um, you're probably right. And uh, uh, I was so overwhelmed at the time. You know, I didn't even, and we didn't have the internet or anything. Right, so it right, wasn't, right. It wasn't like you could, I could look up and learn about his group, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll, you know, I just sort of had one meeting with him. He's like, yeah, I like, I like this one song in particular. And he wanted to record this song with me. And uh, it was called Save Time for Me. And it was actually the single for Columbia off that record. Right. And uh, I went and met him in a studio and we recorded this one song. And then it was like I had kind of started recording. So we just kept on with this thing where I tried things with different people I was meeting. And, uh, you know, uh, it, when Columbia came to me and I got the um, the uh, sort of development deal that led to that record, I mean, they said, we're going to make an album, but we're going to give you money for uh, get an eight track and you can like do more recording and writing. And which is all I kind of wanted to do anyway. Uh, you know, I didn't really have any idea of stardom or anything it was more that like wow i get to record you know <laughs> and they said you know we really think you should be a solo artist and use your real name you know and right. that to me i feared because i thought that's so boring to be like a guy who's a singer songwriter <laughs> with like a guitar right it's right funny because later than that that became really common sure but at the time like everybody had a band, band and stuff, yeah yeah you know? And so uh, I guess I just uh, uh, was sort of thinking, God, I don't exactly know who I am, but mm -hmm. I was getting used to the idea that it was like my name yeah. and stuff. And then by the second record I made with actually the same A&R guy, but he had left, was a lame duck at Columbia and left and went to A&M. And so I kind of hung around waiting for him and he actually came through and signed me at A&M. And on the A&M record, which is the record before Girlfriend, it's getting more together. Right, it right. has Richard Lloyd, it has Robert Quine, even though we programmed the drums, Fred, my friend Fred Marr and I, um, you know, we would later go on to record Girlfriend and using yeah. all real drums. And that's really when it started to really feel comfortable to me sort of what I was being you know what I turned out like kind of yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. and I will say thank you for doing the uh, under the cover series it's summertime here in New Zealand and I had him on in the car the other day and it was just like fantastic oh that's great well you know we're really um seriously talking about making a 90s one well, that'd be great uh, kind of for the first time I mean, we've already always said we'll do something else, but yeah. um, Sue recently started working um, with my manager again, like she had been back when we did that stuff. Right. And uh, so we've talked about it a little more and I think we will do another covers record. People- yeah, I think the 90s is the way to go. It's, yeah, well, it's the next one. Um, you know, we've floated ideas, you know, doing, one where it's like we go Hawaiian or like some sort of, you know, theme. Right. Um, and I still think we could probably do that, but um, I think we'll do a 90s one. I think we're far enough away now that we could find songs we liked from it, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, back when we started doing them, it was pretty recent, you know. Yep. And yep, so yep. I kind of thought like, oh, there's nothing good in the 90s, you know. Time flies. Um, but, but now I feel like, I could pick some things and I know that Susanna has been 
starting to make a list because she oh great she told me yeah very cool well i'll look forward to that and if you do want to we we are out of covid lockdown here so if you want to come down and play i know i mean everybody we always hear about how well new zealand did and um of course easy being an island you know isolated already yeah it helps helps a lot i mean it's so bad here right now we're still having our highest amount of deaths like every day yeah i mean there were almost it was something like almost four thousand a few days ago i think they've had some really high um high days and it's going up fast it looks like we'll pass four hundred thousand um who've died yeah you know the next week or 10 days or something you know yeah. so uh well take care of yourself yeah we gotta be <laughs> so careful you know yeah, yeah yeah and it's it's at a time when i think people are so tired of the pandemic yeah you know they their your mind wants to kind of think it's sort of over right but right. it's like at its worst moment yet you know yeah, yeah so it's a it's it's crazy times still you know and then you have the uh, inauguration coming up. So hopefully that'll go smoothly. The inauguration, hopefully it will go more smoothly. I know they're trying to bring in a lot of, uh, uh, a whole lot of National Guard. Yeah. You know, I've, I've seen maybe 15,000 troops or something. Yep. And I think that'll probably help a lot since it kind of seemed like they had sort of almost none. You know, last week is very, I think it may come out that there, you know, there was somewhat of an inside job I think in so, how yeah. little security they had. Yep. Um, I've seen stuff today where they're trying to get people who were there causing the most trouble onto no fly lists. Right. So they right. can't, you know, go back to DC at, le- at least. But I'm also seeing, you know, headlines where they, they claim every, you know, all 50 states are going to have someone right. taking arms at the, their capital you know i don't know if that'll turn out to be true i mean yeah. i'll be surprised if it happened here just because we've had very little of that other than positive peaceful marches about yep. things that are true you know yep. what I mean? <laughs> um, but uh uh i guess you know we'll find out i hope you know i'm glad there's a change of guard and that you know, we have a chance as a country to get it together and bring things together a little more because it's been so divisive having someone that only wanted to divide us and, and literally viewed yeah. every one of us that didn't vote for him as like an enemy. I mean, I've just never seen that. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, when, when you know, say Bush won, it was really contentious, but like, when he, you know, it came down and was conceded and, and he won, you know, he came on TV and, you know, was like convincing that he cared about like the rest of us. You know exactly. what I mean? It wasn't like it, I, it, I didn't, you know, we didn't like a lot of things about what he did. And of course, with the wars and the reaction to 9-11 was terrible. But at least there was that idea like, you know, Yep. I'm your president too, you know, I, 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 I don't not care about you, but that just hasn't existed at all in the last four years, which has been really weird, you know, a whole nother weird twist on the government here that we thought we'd seen good and bad, but wow. Yep. You know, so, well, hopefully um, things I'm will glad get better. that day is coming. You know, I texted yeah. my wife this morning and I was like a week from Wednesday, you know, <laughs> I mean, yep, yep, like, yep. we just want to get through it and and get get rolling. Yep. Well, hang in there. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very you much. Too. Don't Thanks let anybody talking. in. Don't no. let them in. <laughs> no matter what they say. No, no, no. Well, we, <laughs> yeah, it's great. Everybody's paranoid here, and I mean, they are letting people in, but they have to be in isolation for two weeks. That, then, well, that's good. That's the right thing to do. And if if being the size New Zealand is allows you to do that. Yeah. That's awesome. And yeah. what a great place. And, you know, um, I have to throw in uh, uh, the Beatles 
uh, documentary, the Get Back thing. Oh, that, oh yeah, um, with uh, uh, Peter Jackson's putting together. Peter Jackson, that was just on the tip of my tongue. It's I'm gonna so be awesome, excited man. for that. He Did put you see out the trailer little, for it? Yeah, and it just oh, made my day. <laughs> it made me so excited. And I've heard for a while there's so much great stuff in it. Yeah, And it was just so, it made me so happy to see them yeah. like like seem like they are friends and stuff like just yeah 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 and i think I've that's read good. and read and read about them for so yeah. many years but Same to here. the idea that we'll see a new positive you know see yep. how they also really loved each other exactly it, helps it, <laughs> it makes it even more poignant sort of what they were going through at the end you realize like they really did love each other, even yep. though they all had it up to here. <laughs> they, you know, you get to see sort of what they meant to each other in that. And yeah. that's really cool. I'm Very real good. excited to see that. Me too, me too. Thank you, New Zealand. <laughs> Again. We do what we can. <laughs> for more, more cool things. Very good. Well, have a good day. Stay safe, you stay too. well. And we'll- Great to speak with you. you. It, Okay, well, you have a good day and you say too. hi to everybody for me. Will and, do. Thank you very and, much. Uh, thank you. Hey, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.